The pen lay row is the one exercise that you're not doing that you probably should be. And obviously a lot of you follow my channel probably do do these, but a lot of you don't. And one of the things I want you guys to notice here as I'm doing these, even though I'm doing them with an the axle bar uh, in the background, this is from three separate workouts, that I'm very strict with them. Okay, we reset on the floor and we're very, very strict. To the point where people need to, to realize that you can use a fairly light weight on this exercise. So when I say we do them strict, we do them so strict that you're forced to use a much, much, much lighter weight than you can do rows with. Like you guys don't even see me really go over about 160, 165 pounds on these anymore. I can barbell row 315 for reps. This is still enough to build my back. This is still enough to give me carry over to my deadlift. And I, this is what I use for a weight as, as a, roughly a 600 pound deadlifter. Okay, I have clients who can deadlift in the 450 to 500 range who only use 135 pounds on these. Okay, if that's the case, then what does that tell you about the strength on this? You're probably going too heavy. And it's not because weight on a bar doesn't matter. Say so you're probably cheating. You're probably cheating. And the more you cheat means the more upright your torso is going. And the more upright your torso is going, the less rear delt, the less rhomboid, all of these things that we're using. And for many of you, it means that you're using a little bit less lat to get it started. But when you think about what this exercise brings to the table, uh, look at the muscles that it builds. And then think about how that affects all your other lifts. We're not just talking about getting a wide, thick back, because that's part of it. Uh, so much that I would say that this is probably one of the better overall back builders that you could do. And I know people say, well, what about pull-ups and chin-ups? Aren't they king? Well, no, no. Those are the best lat exercises you could do. And by best, what do we mean by best? Does it mean that you will build a bigger set of lats in with this? No. It just means you will probably build the biggest lats with the fewest total sets. But... The pull-up is inferior for every other muscle in the back than this is. Literally every other muscle. And I do mean that. I am talking traps, rear delts, rhomboids, erectors, everything. So this is an overall back exercise. And because we're forced to use a light weight, what does that mean? It means we can do more volume do more volume. When we're selecting exercises in terms of stimulus to fatigue, if we can work the same amount of muscle mass with a slightly lighter weight, that exercise is probably going to be slightly easier to recover from. And if an exercise is easier to recover from, we can do more of it. Does that matter in the context for someone who's doing a very low, low volume training program? Probably not. But people who are doing very high volumes of training, this matters. But look at all the muscles involved. Okay, everything we listed in the back, in addition to the fact that it builds, helps build the spinal erectors and it helps build stability in the posterior chain. Okay, because of the way you're bent over and putting the stress there. All right, we build a lot of isometric strength back there in the posterior chain. So let's think about what this does for our other lifts. All of our other big lifts, this has potential improvements for it. The deadlift being the most obvious. All right, we're building all that stability in the posterior chain. And we're learning to use our back to explode a weight from the floor. Okay. It should be very obvious when you do this that you can build your conventional deadlift to some extent off of this exercise alone. In fact, I've told a lot of guys out there, and people think that I'm lying, but I'm like, I could take a lifter, a novice lifter, and have them spend months and months doing tons of pin lay rows and tons of good mornings and probably build a 400 deadlift without even doing a deadlift. Meaning we could go and train their deadlift for a month and they'll probably be deadlifting 400. That, that's how much this exercise carries over. Particularly combined with something like a good morning which has even more carryover. So it builds, it builds your deadlift. What about the bench press? Well, we need upper back to have a, t a stable platform to bench from. Okay. It'll give you better stability on your bench press. It'll help you out of the bottom of your bench press. It also builds the lats, and if you're you're in tight, it'll give you something to help pop you out of the bottom. But we create stability on the bench press. 
Also, because of the heavy emphasis on the rear delts, the rear delt involvement is much higher on this than a lot of other exercises, again, due to the angles involved. All right, rear delts help protect your shoulder joint on the bench press. Am I saying this is the only thing you would ever need for rear delts? No. And that's a point I always have to make when I, I talk about these things and I say this exercise is good for something. Invariably, someone says, well, so are you saying this is the only thing that I need? No, there is no such thing as only one exercise that you ever need for anything. Okay, drop that mindset. If you're in that mentality, you're going to have one hell of a time getting big and strong. Sorry, but that mindset itself is crippling. That is an absolutely crippling mindset. You have to get rid of it. Get rid of it right now. Just throw it away. Don't ever ask that question. Is this the only exercise I ever need for something? Because even asking the question programs your brain to do stupid things that are going to limit you. Right? You're actually hurting yourself on a programming level in your brain by even asking the question. You're worse off for having asked it. So when people say there are no stupid questions, yes, there are, because there are stupid questions that even asking tells us that your mindset is wrong. Drop that. Whatever the point. Rear delts will help with your shoulder girdle stability. Same thing, we talk about the grip training aspect of it. Um, the grip training. It's a phenomenal grip exercise. You know why? Because since you're resetting on the floor, you're probably never going to need to use straps for it. And because we can do very high volumes up with it, we do very high volumes of pulling on an exercise and we never use straps. It will build your grip. It'll help with your grip. It'll help with your forearms. It'll help with all these things. This is a good thing. Of course, this is the reason I'm using an axle bar. A very serious grip exercise for me. Very serious grip exercise with the axle bar. And if guys say, well, I don't see the point of building a big grip or big forearms, it's like, well, then and maybe you're in the wrong place. Maybe you're in the wrong place if you don't think having strong forearms and a strong grip is of any value to you. I don't know. This might be the wrong channel for you. All right. You can go to one of those G4P channels. But you know what? Even bodybuilders care about their forearms, don't they? So even that's not going to work. Even that's not going to work. You know what? A powerful set of forearms is very visible in a t-shirt, guys. But, help with the grip. So what about the squat? Get the muscles worked. Builds traps, builds rear delts. Look at all those muscles up top. You build a shelf. We build a shelf to put that bar on when we squat. And not only does it build a shelf, it teaches us to get our back tighter. We can pull our upper back in tighter as a result of it. How much is that worth on a squat? It's worth a lot. When your upper back is tight and you've got meat there to sink that bar into, it will improve your squat. And the fact that it builds good isometric strength in the posterior chain. Okay. It's going to make your squat more stable. Not saying it's the only thing you need to make your squat more stable. We'll go back to that other point. But it'll help. So when we start looking at this exercise, why is it so valuable? Well, we just broke down. Look at all these other big lifts. Look at the carryover that it has. In terms of protective benefits, building stability, or in the case of the deadlift, direct carryover potentially. Right, this will make you stronger. It'll make you stronger. What about muscular development? Back to the visual point. It builds your entire back, not just the lats. Okay. How many guys here out here worried about the fact that, well, I've got lats, but I don't have traps. I don't have thickness to my back. I don't have traps. This builds your traps. Builds back thickness. Builds forearms. Okay, so for guys who are just even trying to get jacked, look what this brings to the table. Remember, training volume is one of the primary drivers of hypertrophy. It's an exercise that because of the 
stimulus to fatigue, you can train very large amounts of volume on it. You can get very big and thick doing it. Put that in perspective. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.